So how important is automotive ground or grounding kits on our cars? Back then, it was crucial for motorsport application because, you know, the cars would be gutted and repainted. And of course, the harness would be something else or something new. And so it was crucial. But through time, as our cars get older, lots of repaint and mods done to it, it becomes even more crucial for our own cars. We will talk about how the sensors and tuning is affected and how it can improve or how it's not getting the 100% that you so need or deserve. The, all the sensors that are affected, of course, the performance is directly impacted by this. So you know, this is something you wouldn't want to miss. <laughs> In our cars, mostly in the Honda, the sensors or engine sensors are mostly 0 to 5 volts. That includes the IACV, the TPS, the MAP sensor, and even the thermos switch on the thermostat for the cooling fan. So when you think about it, when you affect the ground of the whole car or the system, then the rest of the positives is inadequate. That includes the idle air control valve, IACV. So you know... You might break your IACV or idle would be off. It doesn't really have to be always just the tune or the parts. It could be your ground, right? And there's three kinds of ground. There is the black one, which is the power ground, which we all know. Green and white, the white is stripe, or brown and yellow, the yellow is stripe, that's a sensor ground. And of course, the brown or brown black, the stripe is black, shield ground. All of this is equally important, but with the black wire or the power ground being good, that means we can connect everything else to get a proper ground including the ECU, so it's gonna function well. This is why AEM or even Motec, all the ECU manufacturers and even wideband manufacturers talk about the importance of ground because their sensor is gonna work properly. And actually you may cut your wideband sensor's life in half with improper ground. That's how hard it is for them. And onto the usual sensors that are affected, here's the map sensor of the Honda. And of course here, even the TPS or throttle positioning sensor that's zero to five volts and this the IACV so when your idle is acting up you gotta think about it it might just not be the tune it might be your wiring or ground that everything's acting up because that even affects injectors because look at this here you go injector one two three and four and even the IACV has a constant positive because the ECU throws in ground signal. It doesn't throw in positive signal to activate it. So when you think about it, if, if it's a constant positive, if your ground quality is not good, that's getting far from 12 volts. It's probably just getting 80% of it, right? And that's what when I said earlier that it affects the tuning because suddenly with this inadequate wiring, you're going to suddenly have your due cycle of the injectors or the injector duty cycle percentage going up and you'll start to experience you're running out of injectors and whatnot and this is why we've seen cars that need bigger injectors but the engine is just mild that's not because it's lacking fuel it's because of the wiring now let me show you a layman's version or layman's term with, with this so to help you guys visualize and understand. So, so this is a 12 volt on your left, right? And of course on the right is the ground. So we all know, like our headlights, if you remove the ground, the 12 is going to be gone too. It's not going to work, right? So now imagine if your ground is just 80% in quality or 80%, do you think 12 volts will be 100%? It's definitely just going to be 80%, right? And that's 
9.6 volts. Doesn't that sound familiar? And you know, with that much voltage or that lack of voltage, you're going to run out of injectors because your duty cycles will be up the roof. This is why you see a lot of single overhead cams because they keep going cheap on all the stuff. A 240cc injector is good for 200 to 210 horsepower. And we see them going with the Type R injectors. It's not making, not even like 80% of that power. That's probably their wiring. Oh, and don't forget, your fuel pump is not exempted. It's a, that's also 12 volts in power. If it lack of ground, you, that's showing, that's pretending your pump is already weak. So a pump cost, injector cost, isn't a 2,000 pesos grounding kit from us a lot cheaper than that, right? And so if you're liking this video, hit the subscribe button and the bell. This way you get notified whenever we have some tech videos like this to share for you guys. So hey, let's go. And also, liking would help spread this video even more to a wider audience. So let's do that. And here is our grounding kit solution that we've showed you a while ago in the previous video. Here it is installed on the batteries and it has its own positive terminal. This way you can do all the extra stuff that's needed, whatever may that may be, right? You can see here the ground and here, let's look at the engine bay. Okay, the OEM grounding points are here. One is on the transmission, then the other is on the thermostat housing. That's the ground to the ECU. And of course, this one on the front clip that goes all the way to the valve cover. This way, hopefully the whole engine has good consistent ground. But however, after a bunch of repaint and all the stuff, of course, corrosion and this. When people change the front clip or the nose cut for a JDM front or whatnot, you're not sure if the contact or the grounding supply is still consistent because, hey, Tinsmith don't know this. So they probably put a lot of Bondo and whatnot, right? And here's one for the locals. If you ever wonder why suddenly you have to have an HID for the headlights and that the factory H4 beams no longer are bright enough? Well, actually, maybe they are. It's just that your car is not properly grounded, especially the front end, because hey, nobody's gonna admit that we've had a bunch of collisions, right? Or change the front end or the nose cut. So think about that. So this area, and this area may have different levels of ground compared to this part and totally different to the battery negative signal. And that's not even including the injectors that definitely we know is probably running weird. That's probably why you're consuming a lot of gas. Now, before we show you our solution, I want to show you a talk about something important. It's about the connections and to avoid corrosion and to minimize the risk on how humidity tends to ruin our electrical system. Here, let me show you or discuss about this. Onto the terminals or eyeballs, we try to minimize the third or third factor in the connection. It just has to be the copper wire and the crimping, the crimped eye bolt. A third factor would be to solder it, but the best connection would always be one on one. Of course, you can solder it if you want, but we try to minimize the extra stuff. This way, it becomes more consistent and less prone to humidity and corrosion. So here, you crimp the housing and the wire. This way, it's strong and tough. Then we insulate it with a 13 millimeter diameter shrinkable tube and then over it, a 14 millimeter. This way, it's double seal. Now let's go back to this for a moment. Remember we talked about this earlier, but this is also one of the re reasons why whenever someone tells me they want their engine bay wired tucked, I cringe because come on, think about it. You're gonna wire tuck the engine bay, change the direction or the length of the wires, and Lord knows if it's soldered properly or just, you know, electric tape and then you wonder why it doesn't run well and it's funny because maybe some don't realize it because they just park the car you know like a bunch of hard parkers but you never see a wire tucked engine bay if it's perform it's for performance or for racing so why why tuck it i mean if we're running kaiwire harness i'd like 
people to see the good work and the excellent work Clywire did. I guess, you know, if the work is kind of ugly, might as well hide it, right? Oops, I didn't say that. Anyways, as we showed earlier, the OEM grounding points here, our grounding kit has four extra points from the negative terminal, like here. It also has its own positive terminal, but that's for other stuff. Here, the first one goes to the transmission ground area. This way, the transmission ground and the front side or the front clip gets consistent ground. Second one goes to the thermostat housing, so the ECU gets the same ground. Then the next one, it goes to the alternator under the intake manifold and to the alternator bolt. This way, it's charging is good because the ground is better. Lastly, the IACV. This way, you got good ground near the intake manifold area, transmission side, even the valve cover side. This way, the whole engine is properly grounded, so you can rest assured that your injectors in top shape are reacting really good properly, right? Like someone in the previous video, someone commented that he had a friend that had a grounding kit and he installed it and suddenly even his taillights were brighter, even his cluster gauge, which is true because when you think about it, our steel chassis, the corrosion adds more resistance to the ground. Therefore, it's like as if it has lesser ground. So as soon as you can bring it back to 100% proper, then everything else is going to start working like it's new. That is also why my fully cam D16A6 gets 15 or 14. 15.5 kilometers to a liter in consumption. Even ECU later, Jasper's B20 VTEC that runs 12.5 gets 14 kilometers to a liter. And let me show you something really interesting. It wasn't noticed earlier because we didn't mention it, but look on the startup. Look at the gauge cluster. It's daytime, yet it's really, really bright. It's like it's like all the bulbs are brand new right even the starter cranks up really fast like it's a brand new battery look it's like you have a brand new or new gauge cluster right but that's just ground and here it's still daytime we're driving around you remember this and you can see look it's daytime but the gauge cluster is holding its own right it's actually quite bright it's like it's interesting because it looks like it's new you know and you'll see here, there's a section here that's going to be a little bit dark or darker. And you can see it's really good and bright there. That is like a new gauge cluster or new bulbs in it, right? And here, we also have a night video. The when I was checking all the voltage because of the accessories are on here. You can see where I was at, as I was checking the volts. Look at the climate control or the climate control cluster. They're all bright. Even the AC is on. Look, that's nice and bright. I mean, not bright that it hurts our eyes, but hey, they're good to use every day now. And remember, I mentioned Jasper or ECU later is EF that runs 12.5. And it's a streetcar. It consumes 14 kilometers to a liter a b20 it has a relocated battery at the rear and look by the chassis at the rear it's 14.3 volts or 14 plus volts that's good ground right and up front here 14.43 so it's really consistent because the grounding is really good on this car and that's why it consumes good I mean, 14 kilometers to a liter is not bad at all for a B20 that's cammed with pistons and runs 12.5, right? I mean, just like my car, it's a D16A6, high compression with pistons and a Bisimoto cam. It still gets 14.5 kilometers to a liter when it comes to fuel consumption, you know? That's like around 28 miles per gallon, so you know, Proper wiring and proper grounding is a big deal. So focusing on your grounding and concentrating on improving all that and getting a proper grounding kit like ours will slowly pay off in the long run because you're going to save fuel and you can click here for more technical stuff.